Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Open Core Legacy Patch has a brand new version out, 0.6.2. This update brings new features, fixes, and improvements to unsupported Macs, and it also includes a big fix for Ventura that broke in 13.3 that causes booting issues for certain Mac versions that we need to cover. I'm also going to go over all the fixes and improvements in the changelog, along with going over a live demo to make sure it's safe to install. We got a lot to cover, so stick around. Let's get started. Real quick, before we begin, I wanted to add a supplemental update to the video because as I was finishing it up, Apple dropped an emergency security update 13.3.1 and macOS Ventura 12.6.5 and Big Sur 11.7.6. In the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about these updates and Open Core Legacy Patcher. So if you want information about the latest update, you can jump right to the end. You can also follow along with this video because it follows the same process that you would do for the 13.3.1 and later updates. Let's just go over some of the main summary items of the 0.6.2 update. Then we'll go over some of the fixes and then we'll go over the live demo of updating the app, updating the OS, the EFI open core, and the root patches later. So first of all, there was a big problem with macOS Ventura 13.3 on certain Ivy Bridge, Haswell, and NVIDIA Kepler based GPU models. And what would happen is, is after you install the 13.3 update, it would cause a problem and then the screen on the next boot up after the OS was installed would stay on a black screen and you could not get back into the operating system. This was a huge problem. It took a lot of work by McCullough and the developers to fix, but we're going to have to go over some instructions on how to make sure we follow the proper procedures to update the right way, or you could still have the problem. Just installing the application is not going to be able to do it for you or just installing the root patches. So we'll go over that later. Also, this adds support for DRM on AMD GPUs. And what this means is, is that you can watch certain locked content that is like, for example, on Amazon Prime or anything that uses DRM. So this is a big improvement if you want to be able to watch that type of content. So huge fix for macOS Ventura is continuity camera now works for all Ventura models. And a lot of you have been asking for this and a lot of work was going into figuring out what was blocking this from being able to install. And if you're not familiar, continuity camera is a wonderful Ventura feature that allows you to use your iPhone as a webcam. So let's say you have an older Mac and the webcam obviously isn't the greatest as the newer Macs, it really works well. You set it on top of your Mac or off to the side and you can use it as a camera. It works really well. If you have an HD 3000 Intel GPU where there was black boxes in certain system settings and different applications, there was a workaround for this where you could go in there and change the color profile settings, but this issue is now resolved with 0.6.2, so you don't have to go in there and change those settings anymore. That's a great fix. I wanted to highlight this note that Mokola put in here. Uh, we are at now 13.3 for macOS Ventura. That's like the halfway point before we get to macOS 14 release this fall. Ventura has been causing a lot of problems for the developers and it is working now with 13.3 and 0.62 to be expected. Many of these features are still in active development. This is a community driven project. And as such, we ask users to keep expectations in check and use Monterey if you encounter any issues that affect you. See the individual sections for more information. So what does that really mean? If you rely on your machine for the most functionality possible, the recommendation is to still hang out on macOS Monterey right now. It has the most support. Most features are still working very well. And, and Big Sur, if you still are on Big Sur, still works great. If you install Ventura and it's working very well for you and you're not encountering any of these issues, then you're fine. But there's definitely people upgrading to Ventura and maybe there's certain application or something that they're using a very specific feature might not be acting the way it was in Monterey and because all this stuff is still in active development. Now let's talk about the 13.3 update issue for 3802 based metal GPU Max. Nicole put a really nice table here showing the Macs that are affected by this issue. With macOS 13.3, Apple broke support with legacy 3802 based metal GPUs. With open core legacy patch 0.6.2, we've been able to restore the support for the following models. MacBook Air 2012 to 17, and you can see the whole list here. So if you have one of these models and you have Ventura 13.2 or 13.21 installed, this affects you right here. The other note in here is that AMFI has to be disabled. And if your workflow requires AMFI to be enabled, we strongly recommend staying on macOS Ventura 13.2 or older. What's AMFI? AMFI is a file checking integrity on your Mac. Howard Oakley of the Electric Light Company put a wonderful article together that talks about this feature that Apple has put into play to help protect your Mac. Now keep in mind, your Mac will still run fine with 
without this, but Macola and the development team want to make sure that they leave every security feature on that they can while still maintaining support. But to fix this issue for now, this had to be disabled. And that, now, as mentioned earlier in the summary, the version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.6.2 now has been able to restore DRM support for AMD GPUs in macOS Ventura. And here's the full model list. So that's a really great improvement there. All right, now let's go over some fixes in the 0.6.2 update. And I'm gonna to try to highlight some of the ones that might be important to you. So one of the first ones, as we mentioned in the summary, the black box issue for certain Intel HD 3000 based Macs has been fixed. So what would happen is you would update to Ventura or you install an update and all of a sudden you would go into system settings and you would see all these black boxes and you couldn't even select everything. So you would have to go into the color profiles and select a certain profile to do a workaround and all these different things. Really nice quality of life fix. The next thing I wanted to go over was implement proper root unpatching verification in the application, the Open Core Legacy Patcher GUI application. And what this does is it removes an arbitrary patch requirement used against unpatching, example, a network connection. So there was weird situations, and I talked to McCall about this, where if you're troubleshooting and you need to unpatch the root patches for whatever reason, it would complain and say it cannot do that because it was checking for a network connection in certain situations. What he did is he put a nice fix in there to say, if we're unpatching, we don't really need to check for internet at this time or network connection and that's no longer checking so it's a really nice fix. The next one is a really nice one. This one is if you have a Mac that needs the kernel debug kit installed, instead of it installing after the full install, like let's say you perform a new install on your Mac, a Mac OS Ventura, after you come back up, you gotta download the whole KDK, you gotta wait for it to unpack and install all after the OS ins is installed. McCullough fixed that by putting the auto package installer in there so it installed the root patches, so when you get to the setup assistant, everything's nice and smooth. So that was a nice fix, but now, at the same time, the KDK is going to be installed. So the auto patcher will patch the patches and the KDK will be installed. So the back, by the time you get into the OS, everything's ready to go and you do not need any network requirement for first time installs. A really nice fix here. After Apple installs a macOS update, like 13.1, 2, 3, any update in the future, it blows away certain files needed of the kernel debug kit for Open Core Legacy Patcher. So what has to happen now is that after every update, it has to re-download the KDK and install every time. In the past, if something went wrong where you're troubleshooting, you would have to re-download it again. What is done now is that there is a backup system. It backs up the kernel debug kit on the local machine. And then if it ever needs it again, it doesn't have to go out there and download the huge package again to reinstall. There's another fix for anybody that was having Wi-Fi issues. There was an update to the wireless binaries. Fix a Wi-Fi preferences crash with legacy Wi-Fi patches. There's also some non-metal updates here and one of them is improved menu bar blur saturation fix system settings hover effects including bluetooth connect button add a books hack re-implementation cover image generation disable broken image curl animation and fixed unresponsive buttons really nice for non-metal fixes here now here's another one if you have an updated amd card for your 2009 to 2011 max there's new support here for those certain cars. There's a lot of information on the Discord about this, and there's a big shout out to Aus Dauer Sportler for the implementation of these updates for the MXM 3.0 variants of the AMD WX3200 and the AMD RX5500 XT. And another one, as we talked about earlier in the summary, big fixes for a continuity camera because it did work on 2016 machines, but that was about it. So it was everybody under there that was tried to use it and it would halfway work, but it would never display an image. Okay, now we're into some advanced backend issue fixes here was the implementation of logging framework usage for reliable logging. And the logs are now stored under your user folder, library logs, open core patch or log. And I talked to McCullough about this and what I would tell him was is that the application is running very well for a large amount of people. But with some people having issues with whatever situation they're having, it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. And I said, is there any way we could implement some sort of a log? And there is definitely logging going on here when we would do root patches and stuff like that. But what we wanted was a, a proper framework to log all these issues into one place. And this is what he implemented here. That's really gonna help people going forward with troubleshooting. 
The next part of the video that we go over is, is it safe to update to the latest version of macOS Big Sur, macOS Monterey, and macOS Ventura? And that's a really important question. And it's usually one of the biggest questions I get from all the viewers. It's an important one too. And that's why there's not a problem with waiting a little bit to make sure everything's safe before you make the jump. Mac OS is a complex operating system and Apple's making so many changes to it, it's very hard for the dedicated team of developers to keep up with all this stuff. That's why it also takes a little bit of more time for me to come out with my videos. As you can see here, I have four different test systems to make sure everything's running okay from what I can see on my end before I come out and recommend that you make the jump on your machine. For example, we've got a Big Sur system, we've got a Monterey system, and we've got Got a MacBook Pro system here that are all updated to the latest versions of OpenCore Legacy Patcher and the latest versions of Mac OS updates. And we've got a machine here that hasn't made the jump and we're gonna go through a full demo so you can see exactly what I do so you can follow along. So, so let's first go over Mac OS Big Sur. Mac OS Big Sur did not have any issues with the update for 0.6.2 or installing the 11.7.5 update. What's nice about Big Sur, and again, Big Sur is coming to the end of its run here. It's one of the last operating systems to include a lot of the graphics drivers and pieces that are needed by the system that you do not need to install root patches for. If we look into the OpenCore Legacy Patcher app 0.6.2 and we click on post install root patch here, no patches are needed. And that means that this system does not need any root patches at all. Once you upgrade to macOS Monterey, you do need to install those patches because there is no drivers inside the native operating system to utilize anymore. So that's what that means when you see this. And then when you update to macOS Ventura, macOS Monterey, then you have to start installing the root patches. Now keep in mind, installing the root patches isn't the end of the world, but anytime that you have to patch the system after, some things might not work the same as when they're fully native, like in macOS Big Sur. If you're on macOS Big Sur and everything's running good, there's no real major reason reason to make a jump to macOS Monterey or macOS Ventura right off the bat if you're doing oh well. Big Sur is going to be supported all the way until macOS 14 is released here in the fall, so you're good to go. All right, next up is macOS Monterey. Is it safe to install the latest version of 12.6.4? And it is. Here is our demonstration Mac, which is a 2014 metal supported MacBook Pro. And this is what software update looks like when you are done installing the update. Now keep in mind, I mentioned this in previous videos, but I want to mention it again, if you missed that, it is not the recommended way to update to macOS Ventura from software update preferences. The way that the developers recommend doing it is to go through the OpenCore Legacy Patcher application create a USB installer and install it through macOS recovery and that's upgrading not erasing and then you'll be on macOS Ventura I know it looks really nice and easy to do it here but that's the recommended so way if you're looking for an update in macOS Monterey what you're gonna see is the menu will look like this you'll see other updates are available. You'll click on this and then inside there is when you'll see the update of macOS Monterey 12.6.4. And then you can install now and that's how the update goes. Apple wants you to update to the latest version of the operating system as soon as possible for supported devices, but there's nothing wrong with staying on macOS Monterey. macOS Monterey is very stable, just like macOS Big Sur. And what I mentioned earlier about the root patches, we do have to start installing them now on metal based Macs because like I said there is no versions of the GPU drivers and other pieces that are in macOS Monterey. Apple stripped those out because they're no longer needed anymore. So that's why you'll see when you check that patch menu all the applicable patches are already installed instead of no patches available on the 2013 Big Sur Mac that we looked at that is metal compatible. The patches are already installed. We're looking really good here and we can return to the main menu and we're good to go on Mac OS Monterey with no issues that I found at all. Next up is our demonstration machine here is a 2013 trash can Mac Pro. Love this machine and it is running really well on 13.3 and OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.6.2. We can take a look here and we can see that the root patches are installed and everything is good to go on this model and the installation worked out really well as long as you do what we're going to do next in the demo and install the proper way which is to install the open core settings to the hard drive first then rebooting and then the system is patched especially for that 13.3 issue that we're going to go over next in the full demo once that's good then you can go 
to system settings and update to the latest version of Mac OS Ventura and you're good to go. Now keep in mind, there's still been people saying my update size is 11 gigabytes. Now remember, we talked about this too for Mac OS Ventura. The developers do not recommend unpatching to get the smaller update. It has caused problems for other people. So it's recommended to install the full update. That's not a big deal. That's the proper way that the developers recommend doing it. Now that we see that we're running really good on this Mac Pro, let's hop on over to our 2016 MacBook Pro and go over a full demo. Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to walk over a full demo. Step one, updating the Open Core Legacy Patcher application to the latest version. Step two, installing the Open Core settings to your EFI partition on your local hard drive. Step three, installing the root patches to patch over the GPU, legacy Wi Fi, and all these other things. And then step four, updating to the latest version of Mac OS Ventura or Monterey or Big Sur. I do this walkthrough because it's really nice to be able to see this uh, live and follow through exactly the way I'm doing it. A lot of people are still doing this for the first time, so it's really nice to be able to see th this go through a full process, especially with the 13.3 issues, and hopefully no one sees these issues if you install early and didn't follow these instructions. So let's get started right away. As you can see, we're on this 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro. We are running 13.2 Mac OS Ventura, and we are running Open Core Legacy Patcher previous version 0.6.1 and what should happen when you fire up the application is it should reach out there and say is there a new version available and if that does not happen that's okay we can go directly to the page to be able to get the github latest updates okay now that we're at the open core legacy patch or github page all we need to do is click on the latest release button here and then we can scroll down to the assets here and the only one you want to focus in here is open core dash patcher gui app dot zip click on this guy and it'll immediately start to download the latest version of open core legacy patcher now it's almost done downloading here and if you have the downloads folder it'll pop up and jump up and down because it's actually going to unzip the application inside the downloads folder here and automatically show as the application is ready to do. You can see we still have the application open here, so we'll right click on this and quit the current version of Open Core Legacy Patcher because we're going to replace it. Now the current version is closed. Now we can open up our Macintosh hard drive here or click on applications and finder here on the side and we'll see that we have our previous version right here. We're going to open up our downloads or click on downloads here and we're gonna drag it right into the applications folder here. It's gonna ask us, do we wanna replace it? Yes, we do. And we got our new version. We can see our new date on here and we can double click on it to open it. Verify for the first time once you open it. And we wanna click on open. And there we go, 0.6.2. Now keep in mind, this is only step one complete. We still have a couple of more steps to do. The first thing we have to do, especially with this 13.3 issue, keep in mind, this is good practice before updating to any version of newer operating system. Make sure you're on the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher before you make the jump because those always have the latest fixes in there. And always check the GitHub page to make sure that you don't see any issues for your hardware before you make the jump because a lot of times it's all called out in here just like it is on the 13.3 issue. So now that we know that we've got the latest version of the application here, step two, and that's install the new settings and the fixes to the EFI partition on the local hard drive. So remember that command that we used previously and that checks the version of OpenCore? We can paste that into the terminal screen here and this is going to give us our OpenCore version that's installed on our EFI partition. So let's enter on this and we can see that we've got a release of January 1st, 2022, and this is at release 088. We can check what the version that the Open Core Legacy Patch 0.6.2 is going to be at by going back to the page and looking at the binary update part here. And down here, we can see that once we update Open Core on our Mac, it's going to be at 090. So we can see that live after we install those settings. So let's go back to the application. And if you have any custom settings in here and the settings for Open Core, and this is where you want to change them now before we install. Now, a lot of times I, I turn off the show boat picker, but you can leave that on. This is really great for if you have a Mac Pro or a Mac Mini with a monitor and the, the screen doesn't come up for you to be able to see the boat picker, leave this guy on. Remember, you can also go into the settings here and change that boot picker timeout to be higher 
if you want to be able to see that boot picker again uh, last longer so you can uh, change to a different OS or, or boot into Windows or something like that. So that's a really nice setting. For in this example, we're going to toggle that off. We're going to go back to the main menu and we're ready to go. Now keep in mind, a lot of people go in here and might want to change these settings. Don't change these settings unless you know what you're doing. What's nice about this is, is that when you start the OpenCore Legacy Patch or application, it looks at the exact hardware model that you're using and will set the settings that it needs to be able to perform properly without any modifications at all. So you don't need to say anything else in here unless you're doing something very specific that you know you need to do. So we'll return back to the main menu and we're ready to install. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention. Every time you start this application, these settings will be reset. These are not like, you're not gonna see these settings like all on. If they reset back to the default to the way they were set, they don't show you what's currently on. So keep that in mind. Like if you go back in here and say, hey, I turned this off and it's still showing check marked on. That's not how these particular settings work. It only sets it for one time and always sets them to default. So again, we're gonna turn this off, return back to the main menu. We're gonna click build and install open core. Now it's going to give you this full, really nice log list showing you all the different things that it's going to do. And then it's going to put all those settings into a temporary folder. Then we're going to be able to install those settings to the EFI partition on your local hard drive. We're going to click install the disk and we're going to, we only have one hard drive in here and this is our main internal drive. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to click on the EFI partition and then it's going to ask us for an administrator password here. It's going to mount that EFI partition. You saw that for a second, install those settings to the location. And then it's going to say, Hey, we're all done. Let's reboot. And we're going to do that now. All right, we're back up. Now let's verify that the open core version on your hard drive is properly updated. Now you will see this on Mac OS Ventura. This is a background items have been added. Open core patcher has added items that can run in the background and can change and manage this in login item settings. Now, this is fine because this is the automatic patcher running to make sure that you're on the latest version. So we can actually see that live here by going into library and then launch agents. This is the P list, or this is the auto launcher that it's going to do. And you can look in here, there's click on this guy, hit spacebar, and you can see all this does is run at load and it's gonna run the application support open core patcher to make sure that we're running the root patches and give you warnings. So we'll close that up and let's check that version. Run that same command again, and there we are. Release 0.9.036-2023. Our open core version on this MacBook Pro is fully updated. That is step two complete, installing open core to our internal hard drive. Back to that automatic patcher that I was just showing you in the launch statement. All it does is run the application to make sure that you are updated to the latest version of open core and the root patches. I can't tell you how many people I heard in the past say, hey, I updated the latest version of Mac OS and my system is super slow and I don't know what's wrong with it. That's why this was implemented so that it can give the user a little friendly warning like, hey, your system might be running slow because you did not install the latest version of the open core patches. That's what that's there for. I wanted to have these here open so you can see what happens live when we run the root patches part. That's step three. So let's go back into the application now and we're going to install the root patches. And again, I like to make sure that the system's running properly on the latest version of open core legacy patcher before we make the jump to 13.3 to eliminate any issues that might've been added by 13.3 or a newer version. So what, what's going to happen here is when we install these post root install patches, things are going to be different depending on which Mac we have. If you need the kernel debug kit, you're going to get a new version in this folder here, library developer KDK, and the version of the auto patch is going to be updated and all the root patches will be installed. So when we click on post root patch here, we'll see that the last time I patched the system was on 0.6.1 back in January of 2023 when we last met here. What it's saying now is that with the new version of 0.6.2, we've got new patches to install for your system, AMD Legacy GCN and your Intel Skylake. So we're going to start that now. And then we're going to relaunch as root, click OK, yes, and enter an administrator password. And now the root patching has started. And there it goes. It updated our 
auto patcher here and it used the existing KDK because you can see that the 13.2 is still there. It did not need to download it and we had a lot quicker root patching. And what happened was, is as you can see here, the version of OpenCore Patcher was updated to March 27th. So the auto patcher has been updated, but the KDK is still the same here because we're still on 13.2 and that's why it used the current version that's already installed there and we did not need to touch that and that's why that date has not changed. So we're gonna reboot now to make sure everything's working properly. All right, we're back up. Step one, the application's done. Step two, the open core to your local hard drive's done. And step three, the post install root patch is now installed. So to verify, just click on the button again. All the applicable patches are already installed. We are good to go with 0.6.2. So that's the part we're gonna do next. So we're gonna close this out and we're gonna open up system settings and we're gonna open the software update piece and we're going to update to the latest version. It's going to check for updates now and should show 13.3 is available. All right, there it is. Mac OS Ventura 13.3. We can click update now. If we can click on more info to be able to see what the update is all about, and we can see all the fixes in here. So we can either hit install now right there or just click update now. Either will work. We'll click agree here and the download will start. Again, we got to do that full 11 gigabyte install. We'll wait for it to calculate here and show the size and then we'll come right back after the download is finished and the preparing phase is finished. Once the download finishes with the 11.7 gigabytes here, maybe 10 to 20 minutes on preparing the update, it'll reboot to install the update and we'll be back after this is all complete. Okay, we are back up after installing the Mac OS Ventura 13.3 update. And as I mentioned early in the video, this is the message that we should see from this auto patcher right here. The auto patcher kicked off and checked to make sure that we have the root patches installed. It found out that since we installed the 13.3 update, they got wiped out and it's time to reapply them. All we need to do is click on okay right here and then type in our administrator password. And there we go. Immediately what is going to happen now, as you can see here, and that's why I left this folder open, we are running the 13.2 KDK. And anytime there's an update, Apple will usually provide a brand new KDK with a new version, which is 13.3 in this case. It is downloading that directly from the server and it's going to install that. And you'll see that change here once it gets installing. Now, one thing that you'll notice while we're waiting for this to download is on that screen that told us that we needed to do the patches after. If you don't, update the application or the auto patcher, you might get a message like this saying that, hey, we detected that you're on a previous version of Open Core Legacy Patcher and you need to update. So that actually saves us a little bit of time when we come back up for the update. So now the kernel development kit is downloaded and the root patching has started. Now you can see right here, installing the KDK package. Now keep in mind, only certain hardware models require the KDK, not every single model. But if you do, this is the part that you will see here. And as you can see, it's totally gone. It's wiping it out. And then it's going to reinstall into here and we'll see the 13.3 KDK. And there it is. You can see that there's the backup package now. That's where our backup is stored. I mentioned that earlier, the new feature, this gets wiped out for whatever. It will not have to download it again. It'll just reinstall the backup copy that it has. Now it's gonna rebuild the kernel cache and we'll be good to go and we'll reboot. And our 13.3 system with OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.6.2 will be ready to go. All right, just finished. All we need to do is click on reboot here and then restart. Okay, we're back up, let's log in. I wanted to mention something else here while we are logging in. On certain models, uh, I want you to keep notice that if you boot this machine up after the update is complete, it needs the root patches. Uh, if you don't get to them and the machine goes to sleep, you might not be able to wake up the screen until the patches are installed. So let's say that you installed the update and you walked away, came back and wait a minute, it's this, the machine's on and put the display to sleep, but it won't wake up without those root patches. So you'll have to force power down and then restart. Then you can come up and install those patches and the machine will be able to go to sleep again. So I just don't want you to get caught off guard if that happens to you on your uh, Ventura machine. So now we're back up. Let's check the, our version of OpenCore Patcher here. We'll open it up. We'll click on and post install root patch. All applicable patches are already installed and here's our patch date. 
Okay, this is the update part of the video that I mentioned at the intro, talking about the macOS Ventura 13.3.1 update, the macOS Monterey 12.6.5, and the macOS Big Sur 11.7.6, and don't forget, Safari 16.4.1. Only one week after the huge 13.3 update, which is the spring release, Apple dropped these security updates, and they're very important because if you look at this, Apple is aware that a arbitrary code exploit has already been actively exploited. Apple would not have gone through this big deal only one week after a huge update to put these out for iOS, Ventura, and Big Sur, and Monterey if it wasn't a big deal. So there was no way that I was going to end this video without giving you the latest information on these updates. I brought my test boxes back up to date. We'll start with macOS Big Sur. 11.7.6 installed just fine on this unit and Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.6.2 is fully compatible with no issues. Now we can talk about macOS Monterey. We are updated to macOS Monterey 11.7.6 and there's no extra updates here showing just macOS Ventura on 0.6.2. No surprises here. Now when we get to macOS Ventura, there is some information that I wanted to share. When we update on AMD devices, we have to get that kernel debug kit. Since this is a very small supplemental update, Apple did release a brand new KDK 22E261, the same version. Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.6.2 picked it up and installed on the latest version of the KDK. We've got the latest version 13.3.1, so everything went great on 0.6.2 and macOS Ventura 13.3.1. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.